Welcome to the third episode of the photography vlog. Today we are at the Parker Mill County Park. I believe is what it's called. Once again, I should really be better at getting these names before I start recording. But again, I will throw the map up on the screen so you can see where it is that I am. Uh, ground's kind of uneven. I tried my best to get it level. It still looks a little crooked now that I'm standing back here. Um, but today we're going to be trying to, uh, to get some nice photos. It just rained a bunch in the last like 24 hours. So we have a lot heavier kind of uh, water flow back here in the, in the river. So that's what we're aiming for to start. Two new massive changes. I'm filming, uh, this is the first episode that I'll have filmed on my new FX30 and I changed my X-H2 to an A7R4. So 40 megapixel crop sensor camera to a 60 megapixel full frame sensor. And uh, we also have the Sigma 35 1.4 art lens as well. So this is stills, FX30 is for video. So uh, yeah, let's go. Taking photos or videos of bodies of water has always been something that I struggled to make look the same way on video or on photo the way that I see it when I'm here. Um, so <laughs> we're gonna try our best. You can you can kind of see what I'm working with down here, but we're gonna we're gonna try our best. Um, this is also a test for the autofocus on the FX30. As that's the reason that I switched was I was having just tremendous issues with autofocus um, with the Fujifilm gear with the amount of moving that I do. So um, I'm hoping that everything stays in focus and we look good. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attempt to get a photo of kind of these uh, river rapids. Uh, I don't want anybody to, to come for me that this is not rapid river. I am aware. This is post rain river, so it's a little faster than normal. But uh, I hope you can hear me and we're gonna see what I can do. I did a little bit of cheating when it comes to uh, to photography in a purist purist mindset um, a lot of people will take like a spray bottle or or will throw some water on stuff to kind of give it um, I don't know some character I guess is what we'll say so I threw a little bit of water on this plant and I'm gonna see if I can't get a shot of it that uh, that looks like anything having a hard time telling if um, my exposure is preferential or not but more so the ND filter that I have it isn't the most expensive one in the world and I feel like I'm seeing a little bit of that kind of X Xing on it when you uh, when you adjust it closer towards the the full extent I'm technically three or four dots away from the fullest ND capabilities that it has and it's still not quite enough so then I'm dropping my aperture down to like f6 to try to compensate as well so I don't know if I'm having vignetting around the edges and if so my bad um, we will get a different ND filter next time if there is um, this thing is interesting it's kind of it's a nice little sit down chill area I guess really cool living roof or living shingles or whatever it's called I don't actually know I, I don't really think there's an image here, to be honest. But I just think it's kind of neat. Something that I've been trying to do when I'm out shooting and I'm feeling like maybe it's time to kind of pack it up or that the shoot isn't going very well, um, what I will do is I will give myself like a five or 10 minute timer and I will say, hey, I'm gonna just push for five or 10 more minutes and if it's still not working, then we will leave. And sometimes having that little extra time crunch or that like kind of a realistic deadline or stop point usually will end up kind of pushing me to get some creativity out of it, at least 
you know, really changing my mindset to get back in it. Like, see, let's get, we got five more minutes. Let's get as much as we can in five minutes. And then usually I will end up getting maybe one or two good images out of that. And I find that, that uh, that's just something to work, you know, that I think is worth trying. been a few days since I was here and filmed the uh, first part of the video that you have already watched. Um, let the weather change a little bit, figured I'd come back with some different conditions and also when it was warmer and not raining. So here we are. Um, and I also have made an additional change. Surprise, surprise. I am now using a Tamron 28 to 75 F2.8 G2. I'll save you all the other letters that don't actually matter, but that's, that's the ones I'm using for photos now. Um, I figured I'd come take a look down here. Kind of some nice like flowers and stuff all along the ground. But it's still not fully, fully spring yet. So there's still a fair amount of gray amongst the, the little bit of green that has popped up. But I like this picture of this, or I like this flower down here and I think I'm gonna grab a photo of it. Right. The difficult thing uh, for me when filming or taking photos when it's super sunny outside, I did mention in another video, um, it's the, the exposure difference. Um, what is in focus, or rather what is in the sun versus what is not in the sun. And I don't want one part of the photo to be exposed properly and the other part to be blown out or super underexposed. And it's hard to kind of get, to get balance. And, it presents a little bit of a struggle sometimes. All right, you can't see me because I'm behind the camera currently, but in filming, I noticed there was a little piece of white moving around on my camera. I'm gonna try to get a picture of him. But while I was filming, this little spider made his way up onto my camera. That's part of, uh, I guess, taking photos in the woods. All right, part of the joys of filming in nature is that uh, sometimes you wind up, I don't want to say the word attacked, but sometimes you wind up uh, having nature come visit you while you're out there. Now, I really enjoy shooting with prime lenses because they're typically a smaller lens, they're a faster lens, and they usually have corner-to-corner -corner sharpness that is superior to your typical zoom lens. Um, but I was looking at the Tamron 28-75 to f2.8 G2, and I was finding that the edge-to-edge -edge sharpness was fantastic. It isn't necessarily the smallest lens, um, but it was affordable at $799 and I really enjoy having the versatility of 28 being fairly wide and 75 being fairly zoomed in. So um, that's what today's video, or rather the second half of today's video is, is shot with. Photos wise is the 28 to 75. Tell me how you like it. You know, the thing about landscape and wildlife photography is that you can come to a place multiple times on multiple different days for several hours at a time and find absolutely nothing. And in some days you come and you find a bunch of stuff within 10 or 15 minutes of being here. So that's kind of, it's exciting and both frustrating because sometimes you never know what you're going to get and it pays off and sometimes it does absolutely the opposite. So. I feel like today, and with this particular park, I'm having absolutely no luck. This is probably my third or fourth day coming here looking for things, and I'm just, I'm not seeing it yet, so I'll probably try again later on in the season and, and give it another try. But I think for today, I think that we're gonna call it, this park is better for walking than it is for photography, which it happens. Thanks for watching, see you next time.